Hey, thank you very much. And uh, thanks to the High Commissioner and Northern Mike for um, you know, giving me the opportunity to present uh, the Southern Silver Story here at, uh, here at this event. Uh, first, of course, the forward-looking statement. Uh, of course, a number of things that I'm going to say today are going to be aspirational in nature and prospective, and they really should be taken as such and uh, in due consideration. Um, as I go through the presentation, I'll be touching on a number of, uh, number of features of, uh, of uh, Southern Silver, as well as the Cerro Las Manitas project. Uh, of course, the project itself, the people behind the project, uh, the access to capital and how we've been able to get money into the ground. And then, of course, uh, also um, the growth potential of the project and the ability that we've shown over the last several years of being able to convert exploration targets into, uh, into mineral resources in the, in the ground. So Southern Silver Exploration Corp, we're a Vancouver-based uh, group of mine finders with uh, you know, long-term success in Mexico and a focus on developing shareholder value through exploration and discovery. We, with our uh, joint venture partners, Electrum Global Holdings, are uh, focused on establishing our Cerro Las Manitas project, located in Durango, as one of the premier polymetallic projects in, uh, in Mexico. And how we're doing that is by continuing to build resources uh, through, uh, through exploration. In May of uh, this year, uh, we announced an updated resource uh, to uh, Cerro Las Manitas at a 175 silver equivalent cutoff. Uh, we, uh, produced uh, or identified 272 million silver equivalent ounces in both the indicated and inferred categories. Uh, it's about 49% in indicated, 51% inferred. And that breaks down to 83 million ounces of silver and 2.2 billion pounds of combined lead and zinc. Uh, we feel there's still more to come. We have new targets and I will get into those as we proceed with the uh, with the presentation, and we uh, feel that we can continue to grow this resource from the 270 that we have up uh, in excess of 350 million silver equivalent ounces. Our cash discovery cost is uh, now seven cents an ounce silver, or uh, literally a silver equivalent, or literally half a penny a pound zinc equivalent. And so continued exploration, continued resource growth, even within this market, seems like a, a pragmatic way of, uh, of growing the company and the asset uh, organically. A little bit of corporate information here. Uh, we have uh, 60, uh, sorry, 96 million shares issued outstanding, 160 fully diluted. Uh, and in terms of ownership, uh, Electum Global Holdings um, has both a piece of uh, the Cerro Las Manitas project, but also a 36% equity interest in, uh, in the company. And then friends and family have, uh, have another 10% uh, interest in the uh, or in equity interest in the company. And now uh, on to the projects. Southern Silver has uh, two main projects. The flagship is uh, Cerro Las Manitas. And, uh, <coughs> oh, that doesn't work, okay. Cerro Las Manitas, located in, uh, in Durango, uh, Mexico, as well as uh, the Oro Project in, in Southern New Mexico. Uh, Cerro Las Manitas is the flagship of the company. Uh, and we continue to advance this towards a uh, production decision. The property is 100% owned by the joint venture. We have good and strong financial backing from the Electrum Group. Uh, since acquisition in late 2010, we've uh, put $18.5 million into, uh, into the ground in acquisition and exploration on the, um, uh, on the project. And we have new targeting that we look to uh, reach our next milestone of uh, 350 million silver equivalent ounces in, uh, in the near to midterm. The Oro project, which I'll refer to right at the end of the presentation, is a large laramide porphyry copper system uh, with some gold targets, adjacent gold targets, and we're currently looking for a partner to, uh, to help us out with, uh, with that project as well. Uh, and so now on to the flagship Cerro Las Manitas uh, in terms of the project history. Uh, we uh, first optioned the project in, the, in late 2010 and uh, started exploration in earnest in, uh, in 2011. Uh, and as you see from this slide, we 
uh, you know, show investment as well as uh, the different milestones and the project growth that we've been able to achieve uh, really since uh, uh, March 2016. And so uh, we've continued to upgrade the resource from 110 to 208 to 272 million silver equivalent ounces and, uh, and, and really looking at taking our exploration targets and converting them into resources on the project. And uh, we look to be doing that again and again as we move the project forward. Uh, in terms of the, the, the metals, this is a uh, polymetallic deposit. Uh, it's a scarn deposit, so it's silver, lead, zinc, uh, with a small bit of, uh, small bit of copper. Uh, zinc makes up of around 50% of, uh, of the resource, and, uh, and then silver, lead, and copper make up about the other, the other 50%. And as you're probably already aware, in terms of uh, outlook for those metals in, uh, in you know, the root balance of this year and going into 2020, looks, uh, looks quite good and with uh, supply deficits in zinc and now in silver. And copper uh, moving forward in, uh, in, into 2020. Uh, the people involved with the project, and it's always important to have the right people. And uh, we feature an experienced board of uh, directors and strong management that are used to uh, being able to develop projects in Mexico. Uh, and as you go down through the list of, uh, of the board of, uh, board of directors, they've been involved with about 12 different mines, uh, the identification and development of those mines, including some major deposits in, uh, in Mexico, including Penasquito, uh, the Los Gatos uh, project in, in uh, Mexico, in Chihuahua, Mexico, as well as the San Nicolas uh, VMS deposit in, uh, in Zacatecas. Our, uh, the Electrum Group is our partner in the project. They, uh, they came into the project in, um, in 2015 uh, and, uh, and earned in. They have a 60% interest in Cerro Las Manitas. Uh, Southern Silver uh, retains a 40% interest and is the operator in the, uh, in the project. And Electrum has been, uh, been very good in terms of getting money into the ground. They fast track their earning, uh, their initial $5 million earning to the project and have continued to fund uh, exploration and resource expansion uh, in the project uh, since, uh, since that earning as well. Uh, a little bit more detail on Cerro Las Manitas. Uh, we're sitting in, uh, in, in southeast Durango. Uh, we're located literally on the highway between Durango and uh, Torreon. The highway runs right through the property. Uh, we're in a very safe uh, jurisdiction with non-narcotic related uh, agriculture. Uh, as, I, as I like to joke, we're out in the middle of the bean fields, not the marijuana fields. Uh, we're still on the edge of the Alto Plano, so, uh, so it's, it's, you, you, can, you can see for miles. It's a, it's a very safe jurisdiction. Uh, we have expo, uh, long-term exploration agreements, uh, ex exploration access agreements with the local Ejido, and we continue to expand the, uh, the, the property package with new greenfields targets being identified in, uh, in our most recent work on the project in 2018. Uh, we've completed uh, just under 60,000 meters of drilling and uh, spent $18.5 million to get us uh, to where we are today at a uh, cash discovery cost, again, of uh, seven cents an ounce silver equivalent and uh, half a penny a pound zinc equivalent. And we look to continue that resource growth toward a target of uh, near to uh, intermediate target of 350 million silver equivalent ounces. Uh, this is the area. It's a fairly mature mining region. We're surrounded by major players, including Hecla San Sebastian project. We're in the yellow. You can see in the uh, center of the slide. And I, and I show the area of this arrow, which is where the resource is, and that's uh, in, the, in the top part. And then um, located down to the southwest is uh, part of the new claim group, the CLM West claim group that we're exploring in 2018. Uh, but as you can see, that uh, you know, we're surrounded by the major players. Hecla's on our east. Uh, core mining is uh, off to our west. Argonaut Gold is off to the northwest, and, uh, and Avino is located just five kilometers away from um, from our property boundary. Uh, so this is a very mature mining area, uh, and, uh, and and it's an area that we like to be in, and we uh, have a large property package within that area, 345 square kilometers within uh, within this group. Uh, highway access. Uh, the, the highway to Torreon run, runs right through the property, and uh, we operate out of a town called uh, Guadalupe, Victoria, uh, which is literally a 10-minute drive to the south. Uh, this is a photo of uh, Cerro Las Manitas, the Hill of Many Mines. 
Uh, and you can see the highway to Torreon in the, in, the, in the foreground and our access via an overpass uh, on, the, on the left there. Um, this is uh, essentially the, 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 it's a horseshoe shaped ridge uh, that is essentially the alteration halo around a, a central intrusion which sits in the middle of that. And uh, you can see a number of uh, buildings and, uh, and, and, and road work uh, that relate to historical artisanal mining. Uh, on the product, on the property that has been going on for uh, for decades on the on the property, uh, we've outlined the surface projection of our um, uh, four main deposits: our scarn front deposit, as well as our blind Elson and Las Victorias, uh, Las Victorias deposits on there. Uh, geologically speaking, we have in purple uh, a central intrusion, monzonite intrusion that acts as a heat pump for the system. Surrounding that is a zone of alteration in green, scarn and hornfelds. And you'll see a number of uh, half-filled squares on there, and those are all the old shafts and uh, historic workings. And so the history has been uh, having a, a central neck intrusion and mineralization developing around that neck. Uh, we identified through geophysics uh, some mineralization, uh, geophysics followed by drilling, uh, mineralization off to the west of the, of the actual Ciro, and that became our blind zone, and, uh, and then the El Sol zone, and we were able to drill that out. And then with deep drilling on those targets, um, we were able to identify the scar front zone. So I've highlighted in yellow off to the west of the, uh, of the Monzonite intrusion, the surface projection of the, uh, of the zone of um, uh, mineralization of our mineral resource. And so we've really only tackled the western side of the central intrusion. We still have uh, a great potential on the eastern side as well, a new targeting there. This is the, uh, the resource, and so it's 134 million silver equivalent ounces in the indicated category and 138 million silver equivalent ounces in the inferred category. Um, the main thing with the slide here is that you see the scarn front deposit now uh, accounts for 74% of, uh, of the total resource. It is also the higher grade mineralization. It's also the thicker mineralization will lend itself to the underground mining scenario that we feel is appropriate here at this, uh, this deposit. <coughs> In terms of further resource expansion that I've alluded to a number of times in the talk, uh, I've just shown a couple of the targets here in the dashed lines, a further extension to the southeast of the Las Victorias target, and then on the eastern side, we have the, the South Scarn and the Mina La Bacona targets, and these are areas where I feel that, uh, that we can continue to add to the resource base of the project. Uh, we also have some greenfields discovery potential. Uh, you can see the area of the Cerro up in the top of the graphic, and then about 15 kilometers away is the, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the, the vein structures that we've identified at the CLM West target. And uh, here we've identified up to three meters of 168 gram per ton silver, as well as uh, 1,000 plus arsenic, 1,000 plus antimony. Uh, within some of the drilling on these, uh, on these targets, uh, we believe we're high up in an epithermal system similar to the adjacent Avino mine. And uh, this, uh, this represents new greenfields discovery potential on the, uh, on the project that we will get to as well. Uh, we have uh, good and strong metallurgy, three concentrates being identified in the main scarn front deposit and two being identified in the blind El Sol deposits. Uh, we are, we're seeing excellent recoveries coming from those and a good distribution of silver into the, uh, the main payable concentrates of lead and, uh, and, and copper. And then this is the Euro property, very, very quickly, because I've got uh, less, only about 30 seconds, if that. Uh, and then this is a large laramide porphyry system. Uh, it's about six square kilometers of alteration around the main porphyry target, and then as you move outboard from that, uh, silver lead zinc targets, as well as gold targets even, uh, even further outboard. Uh, it's going to take a bit of money to, uh, to, to bring that uh, into, uh, into resources, and we're looking for a partner to, to help us do that. And then quick update, the resource, continue to build, current discovery cost, we're looking to continue to grow organically and continue to build this resource uh, towards a production decision. Thank you very much.